Today we're going beyond Denali National Park. We're actually going to walk to the park entrance from the village. We'll drive part of the Denali Highway and admire the views from atop Grand Denali Lodge. Then we'll visit Talkitna, and after a failed attempt to fly around Denali and land on a glacier, we'll take the Hurricane Turn train, a uniquely Alaskan experience. All that and more, coming up next. I'm riding, 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 riding in my RV, my RV wherever I want to be, because I'm free. In my RV, yeah. You know it is going to be a good day when it starts right off the bat with the wildlife sighting. Here we have a cow moose and a calf on this island on the Denana River. On that side of the river it is actually part of the national park. It is very cool to see. Good morning, and we begin our morning here on the Ninana River with a wildlife sighting. There was a, a, a lady moose with her calf there. And now we're gonna do this pedestrian bridge here, uh, coming up just to see how it, what it is like. By the way, no camping at this rest area here. Very muddy, the Ninana River. It's raining a little bit. There's a little sprinkle here and there. And oh, those mountains. You know, I love mountains. So Alaska gotta be one of my happy places. By the way, today it feels significantly, significantly colder. I mean, our temperature is 50 according to the app, but I guess with the wind and the humidity, you know, it's... Uh, it called for a, for a better jacket, for sure. Let's see the view from here. And the moose is gone. Look at the roaring Nanana River. That is amazing. It's a swift current right there. We probably have a great view up there. All right, the plan is to walk all the way to, to the Denali National Park sign, take a selfie and go back to the car. And then we're doing a, what is supposed to be a very scenic drive in this area. And we might be able to see the Nali, although it is, it is kind of cloudy to the south. Oh, so many people. Well, now let's go back and get the car. It looks like some people are going whitewater rafting. One of these days, one of these days. Before we leave this area, we have to go up there for sure. Ooh, rain's coming. Here's what we're gonna do. We're going to drive a section of the Denali Highway. The Denali Highway is this 134 mostly gravel road that goes from Cantwell 
at the junction with Alaska Highway 3, where we are right now, also known as Parks Highway, to Paxson on Highway 4, also known as the Richardson Highway. The plan today is to make it to the Susitna River, which is almost the halfway point, and do the rest in the opposite direction in a couple of weeks, when we'll be coming back north from Valdez. That's the plan anyway. There seems to be a lot of rain around us, so the views may not be the best. Actually, when it clears up, the views are pretty gorgeous out here. And we're still not on the Denali Highway. This is just the Parks Highway going south to Cantwell. Let's take a break. Before we continue, I want to thank Bright Sellers for sponsoring this video. Bright Sellers started with the simple idea, finding wine you love shouldn't be difficult. And you know what I'm talking about. You stand at the wine aisle before hundreds of choices, red, white, rosé, and you don't know what to get. Well, the wine aisle can be scary, but Bright Sellers is not. They came up with this algorithm that matches people to the wine they'll love, and all you have to do is take a quick seven question quiz and they match you with wines from all over the world, curated to your taste palette, choosing from over 100 varietals from over 80 regions. So let's see what we got this time. And I tweaked the quiz a little bit to get some different things. And by the way, the packaging is completely recyclable, plastic free and the smallest carbon footprint in the industry. Let's see what we got today. Okay, here we go. These are the wine education cards. Of course, they match the label on the wine bottle and they come with, you know, tasting notes, uh, pairing suggestions and that kind of thing. Let's see what else is here. There is no right way to drink wine. Learn, taste and rate. Cool. Here right off the bat, we have a Quint Royale Red Blend uh, from Bordeaux. Cool. Here's a Batik uh, from California, Chenin Blanc. Sprig and Rosé, Pinot Grigio from Paso Robles. Stone Lantern from Yakima Valley, Shiraz. Let me move this over so they can all fit. And uh, here we have um, Yakima Valley as well, a red blend from, it's called Vanishing Act. And last but not least, we have Voyage Dance Le Hunt. A red blend from Bordeaux. I'm gonna chill this one. We're gonna try a red right now. And uh, yeah, I think I'm in the mood for this Voyage Dans Levant uh, red blend from Bordeaux. Cheers! Oh, that's magnificent. Let's see what it says here. Of course, it's from Bordeaux. Elegant, fiery, chewing, tart and dry with notes of cherry, plum, dried herbs and coffee bean. This, this is delicious. Um, pairings, roasted root vegetables with herbs, grilled sausages mm, and climbing up to the roof to watch the clouds. All right. So, and there you go, and if you want to improve your future matches, you can scan the QR code and, uh, you know, they'll match you with stuff similar to it, which I love this wine. This is magnificent. I want to thank Bright Sellers for giving all of you Pelican Heads your first six bottle subscription box, usually $150 plus, for just $55. So click the link in the description to take the quiz and get started today. Cheers. It looks like the weather might be improving after all. Here we are, Cantwell, the western terminus of the Denali Highway. Gorgeous views of the Alaska Range. 
Soon after we enter the highway, the pothole ridden pavement ends. And this first section is actually pretty good gravel. Not bad at all. I've heard it gets worse though. Even though it is generally not recommended, I've seen some RVs on this road. Quite a few of them actually. Maybe we should have brought Minitini with us. Although, let me tell you, after the Dalton Highway, I think Minitini 4 got its share of dirt roads. And I don't want to push my luck. There must be a reason why regular rental companies do not allow their vehicles on this road. If a Class A with a toad can make this road, it must not be as bad as we've been led to believe. Let's stop. Here we go on the Denali Highway. Maybe there should be a you are here dot, right? By the way, beautiful views, although I suspect some mountains may be obscured by the clouds. And of course this is all BLM land, so I don't see why not. What a beautiful view. Yeah, the whole highway is BLM land, so technically, as long as it is safe, and you're not bothering anyone, and you pick up your trash, you should be able to overnight anywhere, not just at one of the campgrounds. We've got some pretty big rigs here. This part looks a little like the Dalton, but without the pipeline. Let's check out Brushkana Campground here, one of the two developed campgrounds on this road. There's drinking water here on the left, and this must be the camp host. There are bear-proof trash dumpsters, but I don't see a dump station. There are supposed to be 22 campsites. Let's check out this loop. It is a little bit wooded for Starling to work, but if you can survive one night without internet access, this is actually pretty nice. I believe they have bear-proof food lockers too. Here we have some vault toilets, also known as outhouses, and more bear-proof trash receptacles. I have no idea how much it costs per night, but it must be cheap, similar to the campgrounds we encountered on the Dalton. Might as well check out the day-use area. There seems to be river access here, for fishing, I suppose, so let's check it out. That's a roaring river, and uh, I wonder what that is. That looks like an abandoned house, on the verge of collapsing into the river. I see some anglers over there. All right, let's continue. Let's stop for another view of the Brushkana River from the bridge. That's the postcard view right there. Check out these mountains to the north. Such amazing snow-capped peaks. The rain clouds kind of give everything this mysterious, ghostly effect. Road conditions are deteriorating rather quickly in this section. Now we've got a schoolie going super slow. I don't blame them. Let's pull over for the scenic view. Look at that valley over there. That's incredible. We definitely have to come back someday with clear skies. Although, let me tell you, as I said earlier, we could say that this ghostly effect enhances the experience. What do you think? Now the sun wants to come out again. Such 
diverse, unpredictable climate here in Alaska. And we've been told that the farther south we go, the more rainy it gets. So we'll see what Mother Nature has in store for us. And this is where we're gonna turn around. I know, we're probably missing the best part, but we're tired. We'll just have to drive farther when we come back the other way. Actually, had we come with the trailer, we could have boondocked right here, with this view, and continue tomorrow, but we didn't do that, so let's go back. There's still at least one more thing I want to do in town before continuing south, and we do have a reservation in Anchorage for this coming Saturday, July 8th. Let's check out this possible camping area. Oh yeah, this would totally work out. Ooh, it's even more scenic on the way back. At some point here, coming up soon, there's a spot, actually a few miles, where on a clear day you can see Denali. Obviously not today. Still, it is hard to complain where you're getting these views. We are at mile 114. Mile 124 is where you're supposed to be able to see the Nali. Yeah, the Nali should be somewhere behind those clouds. It's time for another RV cooking show! And it's been a while since I did one of this, we've been eating out a lot. Picadillo is one of those comfort food easy recipes that I like to make a lot. After browning the meat a little bit and putting salt and pepper, we're gonna chop some peppers. Today we have red and yellow. I usually buy ground beef with high fat content, so I don't have to use any extra oil, but this one, even though it is only 80%, it is not releasing any. Hmm. It is finally starting to release some of that fat. I'm adding some frozen chopped onions. Not ideal, but it's all I've got. And with this range, I've lost all hope of browning the onions or the peppers, so I'm just gonna mix it all up. I'll add some garlic too some pimento stuffed manzanilla olives and smoked paprika. I love paprika. The usual suspects, oregano, which I'm running out by the way, and cumin, about half the amount of cumin as there is oregano. A little bit of cayenne pepper, which is not part of the original recipe. Dry cooking wine, and let's move it around. Mix all the flavors and spices together some marinara sauce, the no sugar added kind, preferably. Now, we're just going to thicken the sauce a little bit and it should be ready. Well, slightly different recipe today, but I'm sure it's gonna be good. <laughs> bon appétit and salut.
there's one more thing we want to do today in this area, and that is go up to the Grand Denali Lodge, which is the one perched atop the hill, for what has to be a commanding view. Parking is kind of limited up here, but it must be our lucky day. It is very nice. Oh yeah, I'd say that's a commanding view. Let's go inside. The restaurant is called Alpenglow. This is what I call a Manhattan with a view. It is so great to see everything from this higher perspective. From this vantage point on the other side, we can even see a little more of the mountains. I wonder if on a clear day you could see the Nali. I don't know. The pedestrian bridge we walked earlier today. Yeah, I think this would be a fitting end to our time here. It is time to continue heading south towards a town called Talkitna. We have a reservation for a plane ride and a train ride. That should be fun. The Nali Rainbow Village was very well located, very convenient to visit the national park, and it being in the middle of the village, we had access to all kinds of shops, restaurants, and saloons. Now the journey must go on, but I can never get tired of seeing these mountains. We must return, sometime, someday. There's still so much to do on exploring this area. Besides, we do want to go all the way to the end of the Denali Park Road. Crossing the Nanana River one last time. Check it out, Igloo City. Apparently, it was built in the 1970s to serve as a hotel, but it never opened to the public. Something about not meeting the building codes at the time. We're about to cross Hurricane Gulch, which will be coming back by train in a couple of days, when we do the Hurricane Turn Flagstop train. Coming up here to the right, one of two spots along this road where you can see the Nali. Today we can't even see the tops of the mountains, so I seriously doubt we're gonna be able to see the Nali, but we're gonna stop anyway.
Well, here we are. Denali should be somewhere behind those clouds. Well, on a clear day, which is not today, obviously, you should be able to see Denali somewhere back there. As we did. Well, maybe it'll, cl it'll cl clear up. Who knows? We're gonna have some breakfast and continue. Okay, I have some footage from our 2010 trip. It was still called McKinley back then. Who wants to see younger Robert? Hi, that mountain you see back there is Mount McKinley, uh, Peak Denali. It's the tallest mountain in North America. And uh, we came here just to see it. We had some clouds back then too, but today we have more. The rest of the trip, not very scenic. At least not by Alaska standards. And I have a feeling we're not gonna see sunshine for a couple of days. Crossing the Susitna River, that is my plan B or C, staying down there just in case we can't find a place to stay in Talkitna. As I was saying, the weather forecast does not look good, but the weather around here is so unpredictable, I still have hope. Here we turn off Parks Highway, Talkitna, 14 miles away. Here's Talkitna Camper Park, a full-service RV park, but it was completely booked. Such great location. The Alaska Railroad Depot is right behind it. There's paid parking here, but it seems to be day use only. More research shall go into this. Hmm, cruise ship tour perhaps? And I think that's the train we're going to take. It seems very lively here. And not very RV friendly, like to boondock or stealth camp. If we had a small drivable, maybe, but towing, it is gonna be hard. Hmm, beer garden, Denali Brewing Company, and brew pub. We have to come back here later. If we can find where to park, that is. There's a campground by the river, but it seems to be tent only. But there may be one more place, one more chance, where we might be able to stay. There's a guy parked in a jeep, and he seems to be living out of his car. He said it would be a few minutes. I think he went to the visitor center to use the restroom. And now he's gone. Yep, $40 a night. Not bad for full hookups, two blocks away from the main drag. It is only two sites, very much on our system, but we're so glad we found it. Well, we've made it to Talkitna and uh, we found this place, Ili found it actually, Susitna Salmon Center, $40 a night for full hookups. And we are within walking distance to everything. So I think this is really gonna work out. Uh, now let's explore the town a little bit. Check it out. That's our plane. Maybe, maybe not. And I believe this is the, the National Park Service here. And we're gonna see because there was another city park where we could have parked. Yeah, this is the visitor center for Denali National Park and Preserve. Here we have some food trucks and vendors. Okay, this would have been the city park campground. I don't know how to get to those sites. Yeah, this one seems to be only tents. This is the Denali View walking trail. Of course, we're not gonna be able to see the mountain today. This is the confluence of the Talkitna and Sasetna rivers. And tomorrow we have a reservation to get on a plane just like that one. If the weather cooperates. We're supposed to fly around Denali and land on a glacier.
Now we're gonna get something to eat. Okay, Mr. Salt, it says no RVs, so... Actually, we got very lucky to find uh, the spot that we did because uh, I don't think there's anything else in town. Let's go to beautiful downtown Talkitna. Nice, a vintage Airstream converted into a food truck. It is quite nice, actually. I think we're gonna go to the Nali Brew Pub. A nice local India Pale Ale, fish and chips, and the soup of the day. All right, really good IPA, decent fish and chips. And uh, now we're going to the post office because I have to mail some stickers. We have a beer garden back there. We went by the post office, then we went to see the train that we're going to take in a couple of days. We also came by the airport, and the weather forecast does not look good for tomorrow. And that's all we're going to do today. It's going to be raining all day, and they cancelled our flight, so there's only one thing to do. Cook! Melting some butter, chopping some green peppers. I've got some frozen chopped onions. Not ideal, but it is convenient. Besides, it's all I've got. Salt and pepper at every step. Some garlic. Ugh, one pepper fell off. I guess it didn't want me to eat it. Has anyone guessed what's boiling on the other pot? Well, chicken breasts, of course. Let's add the smoked paprika, and the oregano, cumin, and cayenne pepper, my new four pillars when it comes to spices. Vino seco, and let's bring that chicken over. And what are we going to do? Well, we're going to shred it, like pulled pork, but it is going to be pulled chicken. Oh, it is too hot, I'm burning my left hand. It is the first time I try this approach, so I'm sure there's room for improvement here. I know the taste is going to be there, but I need to work on the strategy. Some marinara sauce, no sugar added. Oh yeah, this is going to be delicious. Let's shred it a little more. The weather is so bad that I think this is all we're gonna do today. Eat and work. And sleep, eventually. Hopefully mañana, you know, tomorrow it will be better. Well, good morning. Good afternoon, almost. Um, they canceled our, our flight for the second time. The weather is certainly not cooperating, so... We're gonna do the railroad now. It's, uh, it's the hurricane turn train and uh, it's supposed to be like all afternoon. I mean, with this weather, I almost feel like not doing it, but it is not cancelable, cancelable so we'll do it. Yes, the train depot is right behind the RV park. I 
don't think this is our train. Here comes the McKinley Explorer. That's not ours either. And I guess the cruise lines have their own cars, and they attach them to the train, like Holland America and Princess. Here comes our train, the Hurricane Turn Train. It is a very unique one at that. Ooh, it looks like the 80s in here. And we're about to depart. Now crossing the Talkitna River, almost at its confluence with the Susitna. The weather, not so great. In fact, it is raining a bit. As we go along this river, this is the Susitna River. Talkitna in Athabascan, which is a native language, means river of plenty or river with food in it. The Susitna, the Shulitna, and the Talkeetna rivers all merge in Talkeetna, so there's our river of plenty. We get all species of salmon up here. I heard some fishermen say yesterday that they're starting to see a few kings come up. So that's our river with plenty, river with food in it. This is a very unique train in the sense that it is an essential service for locals in order to access and supply cabins in this very remote area only accessible by this train. Also for hunting and fishing. And it is also unique because it is a flag stop service so it can be stopped at any point along the track. That's a very old telegraph pole. Apparently, they were in use until the 1980s. This train also services guided tours for those who want to float down the river or take a jet boat. And it is also a BYOB train. Now arriving at a village called Curry, and here we have some abandoned old trains. And here we have some people going on a tour. The old depot has seen better days for sure. These white flowers are everywhere. This village is called Gold Creek and it almost seems incredible to me how many people actually choose to live this remote. Their only connection with the outside world being this train. And nowadays, maybe Starlink. We're about to cross the Susitna River Bridge, also known as the Gold Creek Bridge. It is the longest single-span steel bridge west of the Mississippi when it was erected and it is on the National Registry of Historic Sites. 
I decided to come to the dome car to get a different perspective, a better view. And here we can see the old bridge, which dates back to 1921. Here, some folks got off and they're going to raft down the river. How cool is that? And actually, it is very cool to be up here. I think there are swans down there. Oh, blue sky! I think I'm gonna go back down. And this is where we're gonna stop next, because there is actually an art gallery here. And here's another train, probably coming from Denali. Very cool to be stopped here in the middle of nowhere. Hey, don't live without us. Let's check out the gallery, which is owned by a writer and illustrator of children's books, Shannon Cartwright. She moved to Alaska in 1972 after graduating from college, and she's been in the state ever since, mostly living in the bush at places like this which, in turn, inspired her illustrations. I find trains fascinating. We continue towards our final destination for today, the Hurricane Gorge Bridge. Crossing Parks Highway into a town called Hurricane. And here we are, going over the bridge. And what a view! Not only are we going to cross the bridge, the main attraction about this particular train is that it is the only one allowed to stop on the bridge. <laughs> There's Hurricane Creek emptying onto the Chalitna River. And what a unique experience to be up here, on top of the bridge, 296 feet above the creek, on the longest and tallest bridge on the entire Alaska Railroad. Right there. 
Thank you. That was great. It is very crowded now on the dome car. Everybody seems to have discovered it, so let's go back down. Our next and final stop is going to be at this place called Twin Bridges, right next to this roaring river. Again, parked here in the middle of nowhere, next to the rapids. And even though at this point the train ride feels a little long, I mean it is a slow train, We've been at this for hours, and you have to bring your own food and drinks, so it is bare minimum service aside from some honor system snacks. But it is such a unique experience that I think it is totally worth it. Check it out! That's the group we dropped off earlier. It looks like they're going to camp on that island. What an adventure! And there goes the jet boat. Well, and that was our joy ride on the, on the Alaska Railroad here. Uh, I mean, it's stopping in the middle of the bridge was way beyond cool, but it is a long ride. It is over six hours in, in total, you know. So, um, yeah, now yeah, we're gonna see if we can get something to eat, and uh, tomorrow's my birthday. On the next one, we drive down to Anchorage, Alaska's largest city. And we're going to make that our base of operations for a whole week. We're gonna do too many cool things to enumerate here, but suffice to say, I think the best of Alaska is yet to come. Until then, thank you so much for watching, and see you on the road. Riding